Now let's start using the view factor in order to solve radiation problems. In this problem, this is a type of two zone enclosure because if you'll be reading this, we have a square gold plate. So I'll try to draw as a gold plate. For example, this is that plate. Then this gold is enclosed in an irregular box. So imagine a box enclosing this gold made of of course gypsum so the question is what will be the heat radiative heat transfer experienced by the box so we have q radiation is equal to one now let's add some given here the square gold blade has an as an as a dimension of four inch chest so uh, for example this is one of the sides so we have four inches and then the irregular box has a total surface area of 384 inches squared then the plate this plate is in 500 degrees Fahrenheit and then the board is 70 degrees Fahrenheit Of course, this um, blade would emit some radiation since it has a very high, um, you know, temperature. So, in this case, since this is an enclosure and it is a two-zone enclosure, there is this general idea that if you have two surfaces, namely the area one and the area two, so if you have two areas, you could say that we have M is equal to two meaning we have two surfaces m stands for m to find the total um, view number of view factors we can square m so we can square m and this is equal to the total view factors so in this case since this is only applicable for enclosures we could say that 2 squared is equal to 4 and this is the total view factors and if you would like to evaluate all of these view factors they are f11 F12, F21, and then F22. The Paris Handbook already given us how to find these um, values. In chapter 5, you can see there the the discussion of, uh, about large enclosures. And in this section, there's a lot of um, you can see here the case one for planar surface completely surrounded by a second surface so this this is how it goes and then we have here the f I've already mentioned how we can solve for this this is a composition of inspection and then reciprocity law so in this case it's like saying that f11 would be zero since it is a plate so it can't see itself <coughs> and then since one two is a plate it can see all of the surroundings so this would be one and then you solve this um, f21 and f22 using reciprocity law and other method that we have so for example this um, f22 um, this f22 can still see itself because it's an enclosure but if we want to find f21 we can use the, re the, the reciprocity law so that's simply like um, a a2 f21 and then that's equal to f12 and then this will be a1 so this is how we use some reciprocity law and the thing is we need to find the value of f so that we can solve for this um q of radiation and to find it we need to find an expression that we can use in order to solve for this radiation so to do that remember we started with the emissive power equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant and then d raised to 4 this becomes equal to q is equal to a e and then
since we're not li since we have two enclosures we're not limited to e1 in this case we have e1 and e2 and this is not this is not the same when i talk about e1 and e2 being in different temperatures this is actually completely different e1 it's like saying this is ea and eb where a is for the um one material and then b is for the other material so in this case we have to incorporate that and we usually represent them as if they are in say for example we need to find q1 2 we have the area 1 and then we have something like the view factor of 1 2 and then Stefan Boltzmann constant and then we do something like this and then of course the um, emissivity it's something like this but since uh, this is a two zone enclosure this is only applicable for those let's say for example infinite parallel plates or those objects that are di directly opposed but if we would try to um, have this zone enclosure we should represent this f12 as we will be lumping up this f12 into a1 and then um, this curved f so in this case we can rewrite this equation into this equation and then this f12 is actually a function of the original view factor and then of course the emissive power i mean them in the emissivities of the material of each material so in this case this is our final equation that we need to use now the only question is that if this f12 becomes harder and more difficult to determine as the geometries of the material become more complicated so luckily the paris handbook already given us the formula for this and in Paris Handbook, you can see there that they have already lumped this up into S1, S2 bar. So you don't have to worry anything about this equation because if you're able to find S1 and S2 in this um, table, and now you're seeing it, you can see here that you can just directly use them. So in this case, um, in this example, our problem is the case 1. So for case 1, it says here that we have a planar surface, that is, we have a square plate in our case. Though this is actually not the exact drawing because um, this is actually like um, erected uh, here. But uh, it should have been drawn something like um, this or in just at the rear, a flat plate. It's just I wanted to show you that it is 4 inches. So anyway... Um, the planar surface here is completely surrounded and then we need to find the expression of this is the expression of each view factor and we need to find s1 s2 so that it can easily be used now this is what i'm talking about the curved f so this curved f is expressed in the um this is the notation for our zone and then the inverse of the identity and then this s bar so if we would compute for that finally we can get this value so the two zone closure is equivalent to this general formula this s1 s2 is integrated from contour integration and then finding that would give you something like this so for example for number one the small s1 s2 integrated would give us a1 we substitute a1 here and then we'll be obtaining this formula so the important one here that we'll be using is this one because i've already told you that this this is the expression that paris handbook already obtained so in this case let's copy it so this is our expression for s1 s2 so now we can rewrite the equation into q 1 2 that is um, this is 1 this one and then this is the 2 so q 1 2 is equal to and remember your area that you'll be using should be area 1 that's why you can counter check it with this so that is a1 over 1 over emissivity 1 plus a1 over a2 and then we have this the reflectivity 2 over e2 and then again the Stefan Walsman constant and then t1 to t4 raised to t4 and then so now that we need the values of our emissivities and um, areas we need to find them all so the first one is that I'll just be taking the area and remember that's 4 inch um, per side so area 1 would be 4 
inch and then squared so that's 16 inch squared and then we also have the area too that is in um, 384 inches so that's 384 inches squared and then since these are all in English it is easier for us to solve in SI unit so that we can eliminate the um, conversion of the constant so we can now just give the value for this in terms of meters so upon conversion you can just um, div multiply this by 2.54 squared and then you'll be getting 0 0.0103 meters squared and then for our 384 inches for the gypsum box we have 0 0.24 um, seven nine meters squared and finally the temper you could also convert the temperature first so um, the temperature of our plate which is the temperature of the gold is equal to 500 degrees Fahrenheit so this is equal to 533.15 Kelvin and then for our gypsum um, it's B board so we have equal we have 0 70 degrees Fahrenheit that is equal to 294.2611 Kelvin so now let's try finding the emissivities for gold and then for gypsum so, so that's the um, um let me just use G so that it won't get confusing with because if I use B it's like uh, the emissivity of the black body so let's just use G so for the gold um, we go back to the emissivities table here and let's try to look at the metals so you can see here gold purely high polish so that's 440 to 1160 so that's a range given for our gold but our gold is at 400 Kelvin I mean 500 so we can interpolate between these two values that you can see and then you'll be able to get a value of 0 0.0194 and then for gypsum we uh, take a look at this um, building materials here and then gypsum here is this one so at 70 it's 0.903 so that is 0 0.903 so they're all dimensionless okay so now knowing all of these values we can now substitute it to our equation so we have some q12 is equal to um, A1 so the area one will be 0 0.0103 we divide that by 1 over E1 so that's 1 over 0 0.01942 and then plus area 1 over area 2 so we have um, in this case um, if it's area 1 over area 2 since this is in the ratio you can actually just take the inches or in terms of inches so that I mean decimal might have led you to um, some discrepancies so I prefer to use this in just now but remember it can only be done when it's a ratio and no other operations is are will change the relationship during conversion because it's just you know multiplication so 16 over 384 and then we can also have this reflectivity too so the reflectivity too is simply 1 over eg so that's 1 minus 0 0.903 and then we divide this by the emissivity and then we multiply this with the Stefan Boltzmann constant and then the temperatures that are in Kelvin so we have 533 point 15 squared and then we have um, 294.2611 I mean to the fourth okay and then upon solving we can obtain a value of 0 0.833 watts okay 
so this is the value for our adjective heat transfer that is given off by one and then of course intercepted by um, number two now uh, the thing that um, is probably different from using this simple simple view factors that we continued the problem solving by finding the radiative heat transfer before we actually were just uh, finding this f value so um, in our problem uh, the one that i did is like finding simply this f12 or this um you know curly f12 here and that this problem is fairly easy when you're given with uh, the expression for your f12 or s1 s2 because in a way that it works is that if you know it already then you could just have to substitute all the values and you're done but if the view factors if if the if the person doesn't give you any kind of view factor relationship <coughs> you would have to do, you would have to find f12 in such cases and sometimes it's a lot difficult so um, this problem is not limited to this kind of S1, S2. We do have a lot. As you can see here, we have four cases. So you can expound on all of these cases and and you'll be able to find or you'll be able to understand how this works for two zone enclosures. And remember, if you have zone enclosures, the square of the, the number of surfaces would be equal to the total number of your factors. Now, the reason why this becomes um, A1, this S1, S2 become, became A1, is that, remember, if we check on this um, view factors that are in this problem, we have, for 1, 2, we have 1. And since F, um, this, we could say that F1, 2, if we translate that to S1, S2, small, we could actually represent that as if it's the area times the view factor and knowing that this is 1 2 we could say that we're using area 1 and because f12 is 1 that's why s12 s1 s2 is now left with a1 in this section <laughs>